Hey, this is Thomas Q. Jones, former UVA All-American running back, and you're listening to The Jerry Ratcliffe Show. Wahoo wah. Welcome to The Jerry Ratcliffe Show. I'm Chris Graham, and of course, Jerry is joining us here, and we've both got to talk about Monday at the University of Virginia. They're on the uh, outdoor practice field outside the George Welsh indoor practice facility. Uh, the introduction of Tony Elliott, the new Virginia football coach. Lots of alums, lots of donors, lots of players. Uh, we've got to talk to just about everybody, it seems like, between Jerry and me and Scott German, our colleague. Uh, we covered a lot of bases there. We're going to discuss kind of what we heard and, and saw and everything else yesterday. Jerry, uh, welcome. And uh, well, what, what a day it was yesterday for UVA Athletics. It really was, Chris. Uh, nice setting and uh, well attended. Um, it was different being outside. <laughs> I don't know. I've been to too many press conferences in December outside, but it was a <laughs> wonderful, moderate day, so it wasn't too bad. But, uh, you know, uh, Tony Elliott, uh, he owned the press conference. He did a great job in uh, fielding uh, tons of questions from media, and uh, I think he made a strong impression on everyone who attended and uh, including uh, some of his former, uh, some UVA former players, uh, some legendary players, and uh, some current players, and um, all those others, like you said, donors and uh, just curiosity seekers and fans and uh, all the like, uh, faculty, uh, all walks of life there pretty much. But, uh, yeah, I think he won the day. And it shouldn't be lost on anybody. If you watched from home, uh, either live or afterwards from the ACC network feed or on Facebook or anything else, because we were outside, um, it was, I don't think this was part of the planning um, on the on the behalf of Virginia Athletics, but we were on the location, basically the site, uh, where the new football operations center will be located in a few years when that finally gets uh, you know built and then operational. So, um, you know, in a way that, you know, that was quite fitting that, uh, that we were there, the Board of Visitors voting last week to approve uh, a withdrawal of $10.3 million, I think it was, from a, a capital fund to allow for the, you know, the planning to go ahead and move ahead uh, in 2022, uh, ground should be broken on that. So, um, you know, so we were we were sitting on the, the site of the new football ops center uh, as the coach that will, you know, lead those teams in a couple of years, and that ops center uh, uh, takes over. Um, what were your impressions, Jerry? First off, we were both there, uh, one row apart, uh, as we were staring into the sun for a while there, uh, trying to get a glimpse of, uh, of uh, Coach Elliott. But what were your impressions? Uh, you've, you've covered quite a few of these, uh, not just for football, but for, for UVA basketball, other sports as well. What were your impressions of, of how Tony Elliott uh, was yesterday and, and maybe first thoughts as to what kind of coach he might be? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I've been to so many of these, I can't count them. Uh, not just UVA, but uh, Virginia Tech and Duke and North Carolina and NC State and Wake Forest. So uh, a lot of these uh, under the bridge. But uh, I thought he, uh, I thought he did uh, had all the right answers. Really, um, obviously, he's thought about all these things, and I think he was uh, very transparent and. Uh, very uh, honest with uh, all the uh, questions that were posed to him, uh, just a myriad of uh, topics from, uh, you know, how, how you're going to recruit to, you know, why this job and not Auburn or Tennessee or some of the others that he's been offered in the past and uh, how he's going to build his staff, uh, being a first-time head coach, um, just about everything, facilities, uh, family, uh, talking with Carla. Uh, I didn't see anything that he answered that uh, would raise an eyebrow, uh, to tell you the truth. So uh, I thought he owned the day and, and uh, gave people everything that uh, the right answers of, of what they wanted to hear. And uh, uh, I was particularly uh, impressed with the fact that he sat down, he said he sat down three years ago and uh, kind of wrote down what kind of football job he would like to have. Uh, 
and, and it struck me that it was one from a school that stressed academics and wanted to win the right way and wouldn't sacrifice its values uh, to win football games. And so uh, I think uh, I, I, I'm sure that's the answer that every Virginia fan and, and uh, university employee uh, wanted to hear. Yeah, he's a guy. I mean, I'm sure some folks would would say he he comes from Clemson, and Clemson has won for so long. Of course, when he got there in 2011 as a coach, he played there uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, but when he got there as a coach, uh, Clemson was coming off a six and seven season, so they you know they weren't yet Clemson when he got there. Uh, but certainly six playoff appearances in a row, uh, the streak breaking this year. Um, he. He was the play caller in all of those uh, playoff appearances, play caller in four national championship games, two championship wins by Clemson. Um, you would think, hey, this guy, he's, he's here to bring big time football. But he's what you hear from him, as you said, Jerry, he, he's a guy that uh, he wants to play. He wants to play winning football, but he wants to do it the right way. And I'm sure there may have been some Virginia fans, alums who said who, who might have said to themselves before they heard, heard him talk yesterday. I wonder how this guy's going to fit in. He comes from Clemson. You know, is, is, is a Clemson guy going to fit in at Virginia? And uh, the answer is he very much fits into Virginia, more, more so than, uh, than you would have expected, which, which was a surprise to me as well. Yeah, he, he stressed that, uh, you know, I don't want to make Virginia another Clemson. I want to make Virginia the best that Virginia can be. And that, that spoke volumes because there's a, a wide divide between Clemson football and Virginia football. And, uh, I mean, Clemson, like you said, the, the record they have over the past decade is remarkable. Um, they have the top football facilities probably in the, in the entire country. Uh, they have tradition, uh, winning tradition, huge tra winning tradition. Uh, they have top five recruiting classes every year. So, uh I don't think Virginia can be another Clemson. I think they, uh, I think they're capable of winning the ACC championship uh, in certain years, but uh, to, to be a, a, one of the major football factories in the country, I, I don't think that's what Virginia is or, or really ever will be. But uh, I think they can be a very good uh, winning program and, and on certain years uh, play for championships of some sort and uh i think that's what he's here for looking for a great dining experience in charlottesville look no further than the aberdeen barn the barn has been family owned and operated since 1965 with terry and angela providing great atmosphere and mouth-watering food at virginia's big time steakhouse enjoy the fine dining or relax in the sportsman's bar a fantastic place to wind down and socialize surrounded by flat screen televisions tuned to the latest sporting events. You never know who you might bump into at the Aberdeen Barn, where all the greatest Cavaliers have dined over the decades and keep coming back for the delicious menu and good times. Check it out online at AberdeenBarn.com or call 434-296-4630. Blue Ridge Bank is the proud sponsor of the Jerry Ratcliffe Show and JerryRatcliffe.com. Founded in 1893, Blue Ridge Bank has more than a century of customer-based service, but is forward-thinking and features digital banking free and available 24-7. CEO Brian Plum and his team are strong supporters of UVA Athletic. And check this out. Blue Ridge Bank is home of the $100,000 jackpot drawing to one lucky customer every year. How can you beat that? Banking smarter, simplified. Blue Ridge Bank's mission is strong customer service. Make Blue Ridge Bank your bank today. Visit mybrb.com for more information. Didn't talk a lot of X's and O's. Uh, I'm, and I say that, I should probably say, he. I don't think he talked any X's and O's. Um, he was asked about his offensive philosophy, defensive philosophy. He kind of went over that really quickly. Um, he was asked about staff hires, and he's, he's not going to rush that process, he said. So, um, uh, anything surprising there? I, I know I thought that a priority might be to get that staff in, in line as much as possible, but it sounds like he's going to take his time, do, you know, working out the football stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess there's no real rush in that department because Bronco and his staff are, are coaching the bowl game and it's a dead period anyway. 
uh, in terms of recruiting. So uh, National Signing Day is tomorrow. Uh, and I imagine, uh, imagine uh, Bronco will handle that if, if they do have a press conference. I'm, I don't know if they will or have a Zoom. I'm not sure what they'll do. That's a good point, yeah. It's a very uh, a diminishing class as we speak because I know they lost at least three or four guys in the last couple of days. The, la- the last I saw, we had 10 commits for tomorrow, and that's probably d- uh, gone down since I last looked a couple hours ago. Possibly so. And I think there were originally 16. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, that, that's a very small class uh, for sure. And uh, they've lost some really good players in the process. Uh, but uh, – yeah, getting back to the hiring, uh, yeah, I think he will probably take his time. He, he probably uh, – I would think, you know, having been offered jobs before, I imagine in the back of his mind, like like Carla said, uh, and any AD is going to have uh, – Arthur Salt is going to have a short list of people they would like to be their next head coach in, in whatever sport. Uh, I'm, I imagine as a head coach you probably have some sort of a list in your mind as to who you'd like to have on your staff if, if you become a head coach. And I'm sure that Tony is no different. Um, it's going to be interesting. I, most guys will go and try to fill those offensive and defensive coordinator jobs first and uh, then look for other people that fit in the right places. But I think Tony's going to have a different uh, hiring process. To, he, he called it a, a sort of a unique transition because – um, he's going to be observing Virginia's coaches in their bowl preparation and trying, I guess he'll interview maybe some of those guys to see if any of those would fit on his staff. Um, there are probably some former Virginia players who are in the coaching profession or, or maybe want to be in the coaching profession that he may consider. And then there's everybody else. So, uh, one thing for sure that he's going to have to emphasize is he's going to have to bring in guys who can recruit and particularly recruit this state, which uh, that's one of the downfalls of the previous staffs. They never really got a foothold on recruiting the state of Virginia, and that's something that has to change. Yeah, I've noted in a, in a couple columns, uh, I did an analysis of uh, the, the, the players from in-state, the players from Virginia, and how many snaps they played this year. It was less than 10% of the snaps for offense, defense, and special teams. Most of those were special team snaps. So not a lot of contributions, certainly, for a program that has feasted. Uh, you know, the greats of this program, Sean Moore, Herman Moore, Terry Kirby, Chris Slade, uh, Thomas Jones, Rondé and Tiki Barber, Heath Miller. Uh, I'm leaving a lot. Chris Long, I'm leaving lots of names out when I say all those names who came from Virginia, um, who were the backbone of this program in, in all those successful years. Um, we, we don't have any of those guys on the current roster. So um, Clemson recruited Virginia well. Uh, Michigan recruits it well. Ohio State, Penn State recruit Virginia well. Virginia hasn't recruited it well the last five or six years. So um, he talked about that as being a priority, certainly a couple different times uh, yesterday. Re-recruiting the current guys uh, seems to be pretty important too. We had some news on that yesterday, at least one bit of good news and one bit of out there news and we're not so sure about. But Brennan Armstrong, unless he goes to the NFL, sounds like he's coming back. Yeah, that's what I uh, perceived from talking to him yesterday, as, as I'm sure you did. Uh, he, he seemed to be excited about working with Tony, uh, who has been described as a, a brilliant offensive coach, a play caller. So uh, uh, he also said he'd like to have Jason back around. So we'll see where that goes. Um, certainly a possibility. I've been in, very impressed with Jason Beck ever since he's been here. And uh, actually, I thought he should have been the offensive coordinator the last several years. But, uh, yeah, that that could be a nice winning uh, tandem if, if they can make that happen. Don't know how Tony feels about it, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if he retained Beck and Marcus Higgins, who uh, has uh, – done a, a brilliant job in developing Virginia wide receivers for years. And I think he's got 10 guys in the NFL or, or has had them in the NFL and uh, probably will have a few more. Uh, Jelani Woods 
today said he is going to declare for the draft. I'm sure he's uh, going to be uh, well received in the NFL and will make a difference. Um, I guess it was good news that we saw that uh, good news, bad news that we saw that uh, Billy Kemp is going to come back for another year, although he's not going to play in a bowl. He's, he was shown in a hospital bed in a picture I saw of him with a big cast on his left leg. So uh, we'll certainly miss him in the bowl game, but it's uh, it's going to be great to have him back if uh, if Wicks and, and some of these other guys come back as well. And, and I was, we talked to Lavelle Davis yesterday. He's looking forward to next season. He's not going to play in the bowl game either. There are going to be some – Real uh, offensive weapons there coming back if if Armstrong chooses to, chooses to do so, and um, my I guess my concern uh, if I were a Virginia fan is who's going to protect him because they're going to lose possibly lose uh, several offensive linemen. I know two of two of the starters are in the transfer portal could possibly come back, but we don't know. Um, so it's a uh, It'll be intriguing to see how things pan out over the next few weeks. UVA Orthopedics and Sports Medicine boast one of the finest teams of doctors in the country, and they're right here in Charlottesville to not only provide care for the University of Virginia athletic teams, but also the Charlottesville and Central Virginia communities. UVA Orthopedics has been a proud sponsor of the Jerry Ratcliffe Show for the past two years with numerous team members featured in weekly segments where doctors share great insight into various sports injuries, what causes them, how to treat them, and recovery time. Their team of experts are there for you and offer the best care to solve your health problems and get you back on your feet. Let their team of specialists get you back in the game. Yeah, you know, my impression of, of Armstrong was he was talking an awful lot about coming back and running it back and that kind of thing. Um, I talked to a draft analyst last night. I was kind of poking around uh, NFL draft analyst and his, his advice was Armstrong would likely be at best a late round pick, come back for a year, get a, another year under your belt. And he could be a first or second round pick uh, potentially if things go well, if he has another year like he had this year. Um, so my, my impression of Armstrong is that he would likely, you know, eventually make that decision. Olu Oluwatimi kind of, he was made available to talk to us. And I was surprised because when we started talking yeah. to him, he didn't sound like a guy who's coming back. I mean, I, that was my impression reading, hearing his words, but also reading his body language, Jerry, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me, but it didn't seem like to me, he was all too happy to be really even thrust in front of us reporters with, with tape recorders. Yeah. I only talked to him for a couple of minutes. I was trying to grab someone else, but uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, he didn't seem like he was excited to be there. <laughs> I don't know if that's his personality or or what, but uh, I know uh, I'm pretty sure he said uh, he's visited Michigan, and I know there's other schools interested in him. Um, I don't know about him. Uh, maybe Armstrong can recruit him back into the fold. I don't know. And uh, I think Bobby Haskins has planned a trip to Southern Cal, and I don't know beyond that, but We'll see how good a recruiter that uh, that Armstrong is in trying to get some of those guys back to to have his back next season because those are those are two good linemen, uh, particularly uh, Olu, who is one of the three finalists for the Remington Award, the best offensive lineman in the country. Yeah, he ranked second in Pro Football Focus and run blocking as well. He's he's one of the top guys. That's why Michigan wants him, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um, and it says a lot about the offensive line that two of your guys in the portal are getting looks from Michigan and Southern Cal, uh, the new coach there, Lincoln Riley and his group. So, um, you mentioned, you mentioned Lavelle Davis. Uh, he was there, he, as you mentioned, uh, he's, he's, he, he said he's 85, 90%. Um, and that he, you know, no sense in playing the ball. We've kind of been getting that sense, Jerry, when you and I do the good health podcast without talking directly about Lavelle, um, the doctors, the, the orthopedists we've talked to kind of made it a sense that it really doesn't make a lot of sense to, to, uh, push a guy with an ACL injury to come back. Um, and so we, we, I've, I've kind of been thinking all along, he wasn't going to play this season. Uh, but you start thinking about him on one end, you think about Dontavian Wicks on the other end, Billy Kemp to, to I mean, play the slot over the middle, find a tight end in the portal. Maybe, I mean, Grant Mish comes back, but maybe find, find a catch, uh, a, a, you know, good catching pass receiving tight end to, to roam the middle. Like Woods did this year, like uh, Grant Poljan did last year. Um, Tony Poljan, excuse me, did last year. And uh, the passing game looks good. I thought 
um, uh, Lavelle Davis told a fun story. He, he was talking about how when he was being recruited uh, at, a, at a high school, he tore his ACL, uh, I think it was 11th grade year, his junior year. And um, he said that uh, there were a lot of schools interested in him before that point. A key reason he ended up staying, at, staying with Virginia, his, you know, uh, his commitment with, with Virginia was that they stayed with him. Even when he got hurt, Marcus Higgins, his, his chief recruiter, was, was you know, hey, we're, we're in with you. We're, we're still, the offer's still good. Um, lots of schools backed off, including Clemson. He said only one guy on the Clemson staff kept up with him after his knee injury. It was Tony Elliott. So <laughs> one of those small world things where he said his grandmother called him when uh, the news hit that Tony Elliott had been named head coach and said, see, son, that's why you were supposed to go to Virginia. So um, – that's that's I mean you get a guy like Lavelle Davis back. We didn't even have him this year, and the offense was as good as it was. Uh, that's that's a uh, that's potential for for you know even more for next year. Yeah, I know he said it. It really really hurt him to see how successful the offense was this past season, and he couldn't be part of it. So uh, I know he's itching to get back, and uh, he could. Uh, gosh, he could have just an incredible breakout year next year, especially with uh, other threats in the offense where people can't key on him like they started to do uh, late in his freshman year. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be fun to see. And, um, yeah, I agree with you about uh, Armstrong coming back for a year. It could help himself kind of like Kenny Pickett did this year because even Pitt didn't think he would come back for an extra year and. Look what it did for his game. He's he's probably going to be the first quarterback taken. Yeah, and uh, his numbers, I don't think, were as good as Armstrong's were this year. So that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, that could be a, a big deal for sure. Um, you were, I, I know there, there were so many alums hanging out there, and of course, because you've covered those guys when they were still in high school, in a lot of cases, um, you were able to catch up with some guys. Uh, wonder if you could just share some of the, the impressions they gave you of the new hire and the direction the program's going in. I mean, the news with the op center, you know, ground getting ready to be broken on that in the next few months. Uh, what, were, what were some of the impressions shared with you by some of those well-known alums? Yeah, it was, it was cool seeing some of those guys. Uh, Chris Slade introduced me to his wife and said, I want you to meet Jerry. He's known me since I was 14 years old. <laughs> And I, I think I've known Chris Long about that same length of time as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, those those guys were all very impressed with Tony Elliott. Uh, Chris had known – Chris Slade had known him for a long time because Chris uh, coached at a, a really good football program at a private school in Atlanta for 10 years and just uh, stepped away from that. Uh, so I, I don't know what the future holds for him, what direction he wants to go in, but – so he's known Tony for uh, a long time uh, and talked about what an excellent recruiter he is and uh, a good coach as well. Uh, so he, he was already convinced that Tony Elliott would be uh, an excellent hire for Virginia. Um, Chris Long uh, was meeting him for the first time, I believe, and uh, uh, he was also blown away by the press conference and the remarks that uh, Tony Elliott made about uh, doing it the right way at Virginia. And uh, also uh, with his football knowledge, I, I, he didn't share a lot of that, but you could tell that it was there. Uh, he kind of steered away from that kind of talk. Uh, and um, I think, uh, uh, gosh, uh, a couple of other guys, uh, Wally Rayner, uh, he played in the NFL for eight years, I believe, and showed up looking like he could still play. <laughs> uh, I was, I've always been impressed with Rainer's uh, intensity. He was, uh, he was talking yesterday about how he would love to see Tony Elliott bring in some defensive guys that uh, truly do want to fight for every blade of grass on the field. We heard that as a Broncos philosophy, but certainly that wasn't the case the last couple of years, but, uh, Rainer was sitting there grinding his teeth and smacking his hand together and saying, you got to punish these guys. You got to punish these guys. <laughs> and and uh, like I said, he's still pretty intense. But uh, I think all these guys, uh, all these former players were were very uh, impressed with Tony Elliott and, and fully behind him. And it's important to have 
the legends in your program behind you. And I think that's something that, that Tony Elliott wants to do is uh, have more involvement with the former players and with the Virginia football alumni club, trying to build its uh, um, visibility, I guess. Uh, this is, this should fit nicely because uh, Tony wants to have relationships with them and I'm sure they the feelings likewise. So um, even though a lot of those guys were fully behind uh, Anthony Poindexter, they, they are still happy with, Tony Elliott, and uh, I believe they're all going to be behind him. Yeah, a couple guys there that maybe could be candidates for for jobs. Uh, um, Slade, he mentioned, uh, had a great run as a high school coach in Atlanta, won a state championship, um, several playoff appearances, produced lots of college, power five college players, some NFL guys. Yeah. Um, would be a great contact recruiting-wise in the Atlanta area. Um and uh, heck, just and, having the, seven, and the seven five seven and seven five seven from his <laughs> Nate from where he was from where he originates, right? And uh, and then just having Wally Rayner around, to, <laughs> if nothing else, just have him around to get people pumped up. I don't know if you can have a pump up coach, but uh, um, he got uh, me pumped up. <laughs> that's interesting. Hey, there was a, a hire today, uh, it seems like it's hitting the interwebs, uh, strength and conditioning coach, the assistant strength and conditioning coach from. Uh, Clemson has been hired uh, on staff. Uh, um, Adam Smotherman's his name. He um, talking about guys who are pumped up. Uh, he looks like a guy who um, could could be a villain in WWE. Um, he's the, he was the get back coach this year for Clemson. Uh, maybe the last couple of years for Clemson. And, and if he tells you to get back, you getting back. Um, so um, I'm sure that, he had that's, to work overtime to keep Dabo. Uh... On the sidelines, and Dabo and, and Venables both. Uh, I think Elliot seems yeah. a little more reserved in that sense, but uh, but yeah. So that's uh, that's a that's an important. I mean, the strength and conditioning coach is is an important hire. Um, you know, I know yes. from the outside perspective, we think of coordinators and that kind of thing, but that strength and conditioning coach is around the players all year long, and so getting that person in place and getting things set is is really important for a football program. I learned a long time ago when I first came to Charlottesville when John Gamble. And Bill Dunn were Virginia's strength and conditioning coaches. And Gamble was an uh, unbelievable guy. It's, it's big. Uh, I think he was 250 pounds and had a body that was like a rock. He touched his arm. It was, it was like touching a rock. It was, he had like close to 0% body fat. And not only – but he, he, was, he was a gentle giant. And the players loved that guy. And I learned – right then and there that maybe the strength and conditioning coach might just be the most important hire that you make, because like you said, they're around these guys all year round. Uh, they form incredibly close relationships. They, uh, the players talk to these guys about all their problems because they're always there. And, uh, so yeah, no question. I, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that was something ever present on, Tony's mind when he when he uh, first got here. Clemson. I mean, I, I don't feel sorry for Clemson in any way, shape, or form. But uh, they also lost. They lost. So they lost their assistant to us. They lost their head strength and conditioning coach to Oklahoma, um, which is where Brent Venables went to be the new head coach. So Dabo, he's got some replacing to do. And uh, you know, I know we, we, it's it's pointless probably at this point to speculate on 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 staff hires from outside, but. You know, Tony Elliott may end up hitting up some of his guys uh, that he had under him on the offensive staff at Clemson, at least give him an offer or at least a thought as to if, if they want to make the move to Charlottesville. Yeah, I think the Venables will do the same thing out in Oklahoma. Um, you know, the, Virginia gets stronger, and Clemson, I don't know if they're getting weaker, but, you know, that, Dabo's got some work. To, plus, the athletics director is gone, too. Dabo's got some work to do uh, this offseason. Yeah, it's, uh, I wondered when that was going to happen because uh, it's been happening to Alabama for years now where they, they lose their coordinators uh, almost annually to, to become head coaches. And uh, so you, know, you knew it had to happen to Clemson at some point, uh, just like it does any uh, team that regularly uh, makes playoff appearances and uh, because you figure those guys know how to win and know how to coach and know how to recruit and know what, how to build a championship program because they've seen it from the inside out. So, uh, yeah, it had to happen sometime. And, yeah, Dabo does have some work cut out, but uh, I'm sure he'll uh, 
he'll find a way. He's got a lot of contacts in the coaching world for sure. And a lot of people would love to coach at Clemson. That's right. That's right. Hey, I, I know it doesn't matter when you're hiring a football coach, but the personal story, we haven't touched on that in the podcast. The personal story of Tony Elliott is so amazing. Uh, he was homeless for a time as a child. Uh, his mother died uh, when he was nine, struck, uh, died in a car accident. He was in the car. His, he and his sister were in the car. Um, he ends up walking on at Clemson. He gets his degree from there, works as an industrial engineer for a couple of years, goes into coaching. Um, and then, you know, we, we get to meet his family yesterday. And what an adorable family. My goodness. His wife, he's got an, he's got an industrial engineering degree, and he is by far the second most qualified person in that family his wife is a phd in nursing uh yeah. she's, she's been teaching uh as, as a professor in college for 10 years um nurse practitioner and then those two kids ace and aj um you know in in some ways this is central casting for a football coach uh and family <laughs> they're just it's it's a it's a tv movie made to be wait, uh, waiting to be made yeah i was very impressed uh, with his family and uh uh, cute little kids. Uh, I've seen videos of uh, them uh, meeting Bronco and uh, Tony Bennett on Twitter today uh, and last night. And uh, uh, just uh, incredibly well-behaved uh, kids. And uh, you can tell they came from a good upbringing by uh, Tamika and Tony. And uh, they'll be fun to, to have around Charlottesville for sure. And uh, of course, uh, uh, I think, the, uh, according to Tony, that the, having the Target store uh, here was could have been a deal breaker if Virginia didn't have one. Uh, I guess his one of his sons, uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was AJ, uh, was big into uh, Target for some reason. <laughs> he also noted the the presence of three Chick Fil A's. Uh, yes. My wife and I, when we were leaving, I said, "Hey, don't forget Popeyes." and uh, there's also the Raising Canes. We, we've got we've got the, the fast food chicken covered in Charlottesville. We call that, we call that Chicken Alley. Down it's here. Chicken Alley, oh, yeah. Just, it's a, no, I, no, I, Zaxby's, right down, Zaxby's right down the road. Zaxby's down the road, yeah. You can't drive through there without <laughs> wanting to get some. KFC food. also. Tough for me. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the KFC's there. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, and, and for me, recovering still from wisdom tooth surgery, I'm in Charlottesville yesterday thinking, hey, I would love to go get a Popeye's chicken sandwich, and uh, alas, can't chew, so. Maybe good for my stomach, but not good for my uh, my my other desires as far as that goes. Had to settle for the mashed potatoes. Had to settle for the mashed potatoes again. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so uh, yeah, so Virginia's got a coach, and uh, we the news doesn't stop. Tomorrow's signing day, Jerry. I'm with you. Don't know what we look forward to uh, in terms of how Virginia approaches this from a media perspective. Um, we're used to having a, a presser of some sort with with Coach Mendenhall. Um, don't know if it'll be him or Tony Elliott. Don't know if they'll do anything at all. Um, uh, we, of course, will be waiting for news on the coaching hires, the assistant hires. Uh, we'll be, we'll, you and I both, Jerry, will be looking at the transfer portal and trying to update that several times a day if we need to. We hope we don't need to. Um, then there's, well, there's better still, hope that they're bringing some people in out of the transfer portal. <laughs> that's right. That we'll be looking for that positive. And then there's also still a football game to play. Uh, if lost in all this is there's still actually a bowl game to play in a couple weeks. Yeah, I, I don't think there's ever been a bowl game as overshadowed as this one is because of all the uh, things that have happened over the past week. But uh, maybe when George left and they were playing in Hawaii because there weren't many Virginia fans going to that game anyway. Um, and they were in the midst of a coaching search. Uh, that's the only Virginia Bowl game I have not attended because of the coaching search. Um, but we sent someone else out there to do that. And, uh, yeah, this uh, I think this game will be somewhat overshadowed uh, because of all the goings on. So you sent someone else to Hawaii. I did. <laughs> Who was I've, I've, I've kicked myself in the, you know what, several times ever since then. I did that for a basketball tournament, too, once. I sent Rob Daniels to cover uh, uh, one of the tournaments out there. and So I've, I've had three or four chances to go to Hawaii and cover games, and I've sent someone else each, each time, and I still I still haven't been to Hawaii. <laughs> it's hurting me to smile, but I'm smiling. And um, because you couldn't have sent them to Boston. You couldn't have sent them to Detroit for, a, you know, whatever game – or the Boise, I guess, we, we played in the game out there. But you had to send them to Hawaii. <laughs> your, your news instincts 
outweigh your personal desires to see Hawaii. So that's that's that says a lot about your journalism, but not as much about your your travel sense. <laughs> I was I was a good boss. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Those guys send me Christmas cards every year because of that. They better. <laughs> if not, then somebody needs to get on them. That's <laughs> well, Jerry. Any other thoughts as we uh, maybe get ready to wrap up here, uh, talking about the the Tony Elliott introduction uh, from Monday? Uh, I don't think so. I think we've covered most of it. Uh, it's just a matter now of sitting back and, and watching things transpire and, and how he handles his business and. Uh, I'm sure Virginia fans all over the country um, are anxious to see what develops and uh, as we are. And uh, it should be a fun time, exciting time to see who he brings on board and, and what these guys, uh, how they'll gel into a unit and, and try to take Virginia uh, out of the doldrums it's in right now and up, up to another level. Uh, as my last thoughts would be, I wrote this in my lead to my uh, main story yesterday. Uh, new football coach day is always a fun day. Um, he hasn't lost to Virginia Tech yet, so <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. He hasn't he hasn't offended any major you know big time donors yet. So uh, 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 new coach day is is a day of promise, and uh, it was a, literally a, a sunny, unseasonably warm day, and lots of lots of smiling faces there yesterday. The work gets to you know. Uh, next few weeks. And then after the bowl game really gets into overdrive. Uh, but, uh, you know, Virginia's got a new coach. His name is Tony Elliott and, uh, for go to Jerry Redcliffe.com, Augusta Freepress.com for the latest on new coaching hires, new, uh, transfer portal news guys coming in. Uh, we'll, we'll tell you about the guys maybe leaving too, but we'll t- really tell you about the guys coming in and recruiting news and more. So for Jerry Redcliffe, I'm Chris Graham signing off. Everyone have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Jerry Ratcliffe Show. Get the latest on the Who's basketball, football, and more online at jerryratcliffe.com or at augustafreepress.com.